A couple days ago, I made my review on Star Citizen, just my overall thoughts on the alpha so far. And um, I started getting a lot of comments, especially when I mentioned the whole pay to win aspect of this game. Uh, and I was met with a lot of criticism. So I, I wanted to kind of touch back on this whole thing, just kind of reply to all this in a video, as well as kind of just give you my thoughts on why I think Star Citizen is pay to win. But before we do that, Let's look up the definition of what pay to win means. Very first post right here from this Urban Dictionary. Uh, let's just look at this here. Games that let you buy gear or allow you to make better items than everyone else at a faster rate and then makes the game largely unbalanced even for people who have skill in the game without paying. Let's just look at this bit right here allow you to make better items than everyone else at a faster rate. When we look at Star Citizen, the first option we're given when we get into the game is to purchase a starter pack. So the first thing you're starting off with is picking what ship you wanna start off with. So for example, right here, we have two options. So we have this Mustang Alpha or we have this Aurora MR which the Aurora MR is the one that I picked up. So I don't know anything about the Mustang, so let's just leave that one alone. Let's use this one as an example. So with the Aurora, the major thing that you're really looking at is the firepower of it and also the inability to actually store trade materials. When you look at this standpoint right here, going into combat, you only have one weapon, which is just like that, that machine gun, and that's it. Whereas if you look at a ship, let's say like the Cutlass Black, which I just got with in-game money, by the way, so uh, I didn't spend any extra real life cash. It comes by with default two guns on it. So it has like the laser beam one and it also has the guns just like the Aurora has. So you can basically shoot two lasers at the same time, technically, or two guns at the same time which is already giving you an advantage over what the Aurora gives. Also, storage capabilities. So you look at the Cutlass Black and how many items you can trade. You could even store vehicles inside of it. Whereas in the Aurora, you don't have options like that. You can't even participate in trading. And of course, you can't even store a vehicle on it because it doesn't have capabilities to be able to do that. So for a new player just getting into the game and your first ship is the Aurora, of course, you'll still be able to participate in combat and things like that. But of course, you're going to be at a disadvantage when you come up against a ship like the Cutlass Black, for example. So the only analogy that comes to mind when I think about this whole concept is I think about cars. Let's say, for example, with racing, we're going to have a stocked Honda Civic coming up against a Ferrari. Who do you think is gonna win that race? No matter what kind of skill that Civic had, it's not gonna beat the raw power of a Ferrari. Of course, the person in the Ferrari also determines whether or not you could win against it, but let's just be serious here. If someone just stomps on the gas pedal after it's already in drive, who do you think is gonna win that race? You think of that concept, you already think about pay to win. Like in this case, in Star Citizen, you're putting up somebody that just started the game and started using the Aurora versus somebody that just started the game and decided to go on here, go to the pledge store, look for the Cutlass Black, which is under Drake. View the buying options, $115. So if I decided to just straight up buy the starter package, then buy the Cutlass Black, I'm already at an advantage over the person that just spent only $45, got into the game with the Aurora, and decided to play the game. This means pay to win. So that's just showing the example of, of what pay to win actually means as a definition. Is Star Citizen a bad pay to win game? I don't think so. Not necessarily, Com especially compared to other games, which let's say, for example, one of the biggest, most terrible pay to win games is Genshin Impact, a game that literally tries their best to box you into a corner and paywall you for you to progress by getting better gear. 
and also by getting characters. While you can get the characters at a very, very slow pace by doing only your dailies and getting the primo gems, it's still giving you a huge disadvantage over somebody that just decided to swipe their credit card. And that's basically the point here. And when you think about the overall scope of what pay to win means, every game nowadays has some sort of pay to win in it. Even Josh Strife Hayes mentioned this in one of his uh, previous videos talking about uh, MMO whales and how much money they're spending in games like this. Just listen to this bit from his video. So the next time you look at an MMO and think, oh, why does it have a cash shop? Why does it have pay to advance quickly features? Why is it selling power? Well, it's because if they capture just a few whales, they will make more money from them than from the rest of the player base combined. It's a purely business decision and it's been proven to work. Oh, and also if you Google MMO whale, the first advert that comes up is for Star Citizen. Not making any comments on that, just thought it was funny. So in this case, when I think of Star Citizen, I don't think Star Citizen is a bad pay to win game. I just, I think that, you know, they're making their money, whatever, it is what it is. The thing that I do like about the, what they have set up with their pay to win in this game is that your ships are still tradable. So it makes it so that you could potentially make a profit off of the ships you own in the future. So that's a good thing. Similar to what, like what I was mentioning in my review about NFTs. I, I really like this concept. It's better than what, let's say, for example, Genshin Impact has where you buy characters, you buy gear, you buy all these things with real life money and you're stuck with it on that account unless you decide to sell your entire account. So that's when pay to win is bad. Now let's look at more examples of pay to win in games. So for example, let's look at Guild Wars 2, one of my favorite MMOs. And this game has a lot of pay to win also. You can buy inventory slots, you can buy character slots, merchants that, that bring the bank to you. And you know, it's a lot of what they call convenience, but it's still pay to win because it's giving you an advantage over having to waste your time basically of going back to town and having to offload your stuff and then go back to you know your grind or whatever it is you're doing so this this is still considered pay to win in my head but is it bad pay to win i don't necessarily think so another game that that changed dramatically is black desert online it's another one that shares this same exact pay to win as guild wars 2 inventory space it's weight limits, basically time saving and also money saving items that help you over somebody that just wants to be free to play. So, of course, you're at a disadvantage in that game as well, especially when you factor in things like PvP. PvP is always something that's going to roadblock any game that has any kind of pay to win. One of the best free to play games that I've ever seen. And <laughs> it's even funny just saying this because I'm not really a fan of it but let's look at Fortnite. Fortnite is a competitive shooter that is focused around only skins. So this is the major thing that I feel like is not pay to win because it doesn't give you a clear advantage over another player that literally just started playing the game. It just comes down to skill at that point. So let's say if, for example, if Star Citizen only had skins, then no, it wouldn't be pay to win anymore because you're not getting a clear advantage over somebody just because you're wearing a red paint on your ship versus somebody that has like a typical gray on his ship or something. You know what I mean? When you look at it that way, you can tell when a game is pay to win and when a game isn't. So I just wanted to touch base on all this and just explain why I feel like Star Citizen is pay to win. Like I said, not necessarily a bad thing. It's still a very fun game. I'm still going to continue to play it. And I'm sure there's still going to be a lot of a lot of people that still go into my comments and still destroy the shit out of it, saying that I'm I'm an idiot for thinking that it's pay to win. This is some bullshit. And it's the same thing that I felt about Planet Side 2. That game is also pay to win because you're buying weapons directly right away. So you can start off with some of the best weapons in the game. Does it necessarily mean that you're gonna whoop ass all the time no because it still falls into the same bucket as star citizen where skill does have a factor in whether or not you're gonna win 
You know what I mean? Especially when you're talking about combat. But anyway, that's all I have to say about this. Thanks for watching. Leave a thumbs up if you liked the video. Thumbs down if you didn't. And I will see you guys in the next one. Later.